After 25 years, we are now within days of Blue Origin, making their first orbital rocket launch attempt with the new Glenn rocket, finally on the pad and ready to go in Florida. In fact, it looks like an incredibly exciting day for fans of experimental rocket launches, because SpaceX is also planning to fly Starship Super Heavy Flight Number 7 on the same day. I understand that many of you are more interested in what SpaceX is doing with Starship and Super Heavy. It is the much bigger rocket. But back in 2016, when Blue Origin announced New Glenn, rocket watchers were taken aback by just how big this first orbital rocket was going to be. While Rocket Lab, Astra, and other new space companies were designing small orbital vehicles, Blue Origin came on and said, Hi, we're going to build the biggest orbital rocket New Glenn dwarfs Falcon 9, Atlas 5, Delta 4, and Vulcan in terms of payload capability. It's close to Falcon Heavy, but arguably more modern with higher efficiency engines and more reusability. The only reason we aren't talking about how big this thing is is because Starship and Super Heavy exist, and those dwarf everything else out there. New Glenn currently stands 98 meters tall, and the core is 7 meters wide. That is just the tank. There are actually sections that are even wider, approaching the 9-meter diameter of Starship. It is a two-stage rocket, with the first stage burning methane and liquid oxygen and the second stage burning hydrogen, which makes it far more performant in orbit. The methane-burning first stage is about 58 meters tall and is designed to be 100% reusable from day one. It's designed more or less in three different sections. You have an aft section with the engines and propulsion, the main tank section, which contains the methane and liquid oxygen, and the forward section, which contains thrusters for attitude control and fins that will guide it when it is descending to land. Unlike SpaceX, Blue Origin has elected to use more traditional fin designs, a diamond wing that rotates around the middle. It also includes a set of strakes that can provide a significant amount of lift and more cross-range capability during descent. During ascent, it is rocket-propelled with 7B for engines. These are blue engine number four, an oxygen-rich stage combustion cycle that uses methane and liquid oxygen. Each engine is able to produce about 250 tons of thrust. The oxidizer-rich stage combustion cycle was developed by the Soviet Union using kerosene and was brought to the U.S. for use on the Atlas in the RD-180 engines. The real comparison everyone wants to hear is against SpaceX's Raptor engines. These engines are roughly the same thrust, but are a lot bigger with much lower chamber pressures. Blue Origin has intentionally chosen to operate at lower chamber pressures to extend the engine's life and make it more reusable. While SpaceX has relentlessly pushed chamber pressures higher to get the most performance out of a smaller package, while this is the first flight of the new Glenn rocket, it's not the first flight of these engines. They also propel ULA's Vulcan rocket, which has already launched successfully twice. One interesting feature is that while there are seven engines, only three of them gimbal to provide control during ascent and landing. Packed into the aft section is a set of six landing legs, which will be used for recovery. The forward section includes cold gas thrusters for attitude adjustments in flight. The second stage, also 7 meters wide, burns hydrogen and oxygen and is propelled by a pair of B-3U engines. These are vacuum versions of the engines used on New Shepard, but with a different cycle. On New Shepard, they use a tap-off cycle. While these use an expander cycle, where hydrogen is run over a heat exchanger vaporized and used to drive the turbines, the second stage is highly efficient but not as good as the Centaur V used on Falcon Heavy. It's better than the Falcon 9 upper stage and even Starship's upper stage. This upper stage can put about 45 tons into low Earth orbit or 13 tons into geostationary transfer orbit. Topping it all off are the biggest fairings in the launch business, 7 meters wide and 17 meters tall, which give New Glenn a massive advantage in payload space compared to Falcon Heavy, which has a smaller fairing despite its greater payload capacity. This advantage is evident in the first payload, Blue Ring, a test satellite bus with its own propulsion and power capabilities. 
Initially, New Glenn was expected to carry the two escapade spacecraft on a mission to Mars, but delays caused it to miss the Mars window. The first stage is designed for reusability with a three-minute, ten-second burn staging and a ballistic arc. Before re-entering the atmosphere, it performs an entry burn to reduce stress. The booster is protected with Blue Origin's custom heat shield material called Comet, giving it a distinctive golden-white appearance. Its aerodynamic design allows for precise targeting of the landing barge Jacqueline in the Atlantic. Although some may say Blue Origin is copying SpaceX, they've been working on reusable rockets for years. New Glenn's first landing attempt will be notable. It's designed to hover, enabling precise landings, a capability Falcon 9 doesn't have. New Glenn also incorporates advanced features like integrated landing legs and robotic systems for post-landing maintenance. Its total launch mass is estimated to be 1,200 to 1,500 tons. While Starship is larger, Blue Origin's methodical approach may give New Glenn a different kind of success. Blue Origin has been planning for future upgrades, such as a reusable upper stage under Project Jarvis. This, along with its ability to cater to specific customer needs like Amazon's Kuiper and NASA's Escapade, shows its potential. While Starship continues its iterative development, New Glenn may establish itself as a reliable workhorse for space missions with its innovative features and careful design approach. Blue Origin's journey to this point hasn't been without challenges. The development of the B4 engines faced significant delays, pushing back both New Glenn and ULA's Vulcan programs. Critics have pointed to the company's slower pace compared to SpaceX, which has rapidly iterated on its designs and conducted numerous launches. However, Blue Origin's strategy prioritizes reliability and long-term sustainability, focusing on perfecting systems before pushing them into operational service. This conservative approach could pay dividends as New Glenn proves itself over multiple missions, offering a stable and dependable launch option for government and commercial clients alike. Looking ahead, the success of New Glenn's maiden flight will mark a major milestone for Blue Origin as it seeks to expand its footprint in the competitive aerospace industry. The company has ambitious goals, including supporting lunar missions, deploying mega constellations, and offering a reusable rocket that meets the growing demand for cost-effective and efficient space access. With advancements like the massive fairing, reusable first stage, and powerful engines, New Glenn could carve out a unique niche, balancing innovation with reliability. Whether it can keep pace with SpaceX's rapid development or not, New Glenn's entry into the orbital launch market is a significant step forward for Blue Origin and the broader space exploration landscape.